Good morning, all you Unitex. Here and online. <laughs> I know we don't hear that very often, so that terminology, but it's a pretty common one out there. So we welcome you to Unity Center in Milwaukee. And I am Cindy and one of the chaplains for today. And I'll be over in the corner there if someone needs some individual prayer after the service. We have several ways of praying here at Unity Center in Milwaukee. One is the after service prayer. One is our prayer box. I don't know where the prayer, oh, it's directly behind me. It got, it got moved. So uh, that's one of the things you can put prayers in there. They, they're prayed over for 30 days here. And then they go to Unity Village and they're prayed over for 30 more. And we know that even answered prayers, energy continues to flow. We have our daily word, and we also have our Thursday morning prayer service. So I ask you to take a couple of deep breaths and calm yourself for the day. As we get into our daily word, which is transitions. I flow with life's changes. Look at my image, looking at my image in the mirror. I see myself at times when my life was changing. I may see the grinning child who lost a tooth for the first time or the proud student on graduation day. Perhaps I recall my ambitions as I embarked on my career. Maybe I feel a tinge of sadness revisiting the pain of the loss I felt during my more difficult transitions. As I have grown spiritually, I have learned to flow with life transitions. I know that even during the most challenging changes, God remains a constant presence. I will always be divinely protected and one in God with the people I have loved. Moving willingly and gracefully through my transitions deepens and strengthens my awareness of God and myself as a divine being. From Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And I ask you to stand and join our host crew here. Band. Host band, host crew, all our wonderful musicians in our opening song. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm I'm in the right place I want to thank, so I don't forget, I want to thank all those who are working on this artwork. 
it doesn't it look great yeah. new energy that's coming into our into our chapel here for those who don't know online we've got a whole decoration coming in here for us to continue so uh, again we breathe in the energy of who we are at this center and there's five basic beliefs that we join in with all unity churches around the world and please join me in the first one there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God the good. Two, our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. This God essence was only expressed through Jesus the Christ. Three, we are co-creators with God, creating reality through thoughts held in mind. And four, through prayer and meditation, with God and five through thoughts, words, and actions, we live the truth. And we do know that truth. And we continue with an affirmation for our congregation. We are here to love and build our personal relationship with God, to love God with all the heart, our heart, soul and be their neighbors as ourselves. And it is October. No, it's not. It's November, right? <laughs> the month of Thanksgiving and even more, a month of resilience and uh, elimination, which we will hear about later uh, in our message. Uh, our disciple is Thaddeus, and that is expressed through the abdominal area. Uh, that is uh, right, excuse me, I'm having a little trouble with the uh, fog on the eyes this morning, so I apologize. Um, again, it corresponds with our abdominal area, and we have an affirmation that goes with, the, oh, the color for the month is russet, and we have an affirmation that goes with it that we want to consider and speak out when we need to be eliminating some of those negative thoughts. I'll read it once and you then uh, ask you to repeat it. I release anything and everything. Together. together. Well, let's say it again, all together. I release anything and everything that no longer serves an unfolding good. Oh, I apologize. So I'm going to put on my prayer request what these eyes are doing today. <laughs> um, and I think it is time for prayer. Okay, we have prayer requests, and I do have a couple that came uh, to me this week. For healing is Bobby, and for uh, Ginny with the continued healing from the shoulder surgery, and the other Ginny for positive outcome for dentistry work this week. Um, so any other prayer requests? Yes, please. Strength for Steve. We add a wonderful wedding on the weekend into that. We know that that will be a wonderful, joyous event for you also. Yes. It's both Mike and Molly healing. Mike and Molly healing. I'm sorry. Oh, not the show. Oh, yeah. not, not to do with the show. Just other oh, Mike and Molly partner. There. Okay, for healing. Okay. Yes. And healing for Ken and David. Ken and David healing as well. Yes. Warren for healing. Warren for healing. Uh, Maine. Community Maine. And then I, I want to bring a, up a joyful thing. I've brought my father and my dog to healing here for several weeks, and both are doing really well now. Yay! The one that wasn't heard was the community of Maine. And I mean, as part of that is a community, also the deaf community that's being affected by that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Definitely. The lives in Israel and Gaza. And all that are still involved in that and trying for peaceful resolution. Denise. What was the first name? Terry, Terry and Janice Healing. Anyone else that we've got? Do we have you over in the corner? Nothing today? Okay. Oh, and I also add Joyce as she learns to live a new normal. My sister came home this week, so. Ah. If you're comfortable, close your eyes and take in that Christ energy and put out that Christ energy because it is within all of us. We know that that divine truth of healing, of hope, of strength, and even of elimination is with us. It is part of us because we are the divine essence. As we continue to move through all possibilities, God, we reach out to you in these prayers. We know that they are already answered because where two or more are gathered, we can reach out to you. We can reach out to you individually as well, and you will hear us. We thank you for the opportunity to pray on behalf of these people that are on these lists, and those that have not been spoken, those that are in our prayer box, and all those that are online as well and their requests. Again, we breathe in the energy that is yours and ours together and know that all of these prayers are answered through the name and the nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. All right. And we have some music to take us into our meditation and into our lesson with Reverend Joanne Bauman. As we become still and quiet in prayer, we will focus on being in the light, the light of God, the presence of God. We let go of what troubles us today 
any stresses of the past, things we're worried about. And see only love and feel only peace. We let go of negative concerns, things that we hear about, things that we see, and right now we will feel only love and only peace. That is all that is real, love and peace is all that is real. The rest can dissipate, dissolve, disappear. There is only one power in our lives, God and good with his peace and his love. And as we take these thoughts into our daily lives, only good will follow. Where there is only God, only good, all the rest can dissolve and disappear. And we take these truths with us in our daily lives, no matter what we see, hear, or experience. God and good, peace and love. So now bring your awareness back to this room, this day, and see the bright sunlight and feel the warmth of the day. And we welcome you to the service today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today's lesson is on renunciation <clears throat> or elimination. You know, back in our grade school days in the season of Advent, we were all encouraged to give up something. So for a lot of us kids, it was maybe giving up candy for Lent or something like that. And as adults, maybe there's something a little more significant that we're going to give up, the power of release. So <clears throat> what is that? Release or renunciation is my ability to say no to the undesirable and the untrue. So we'll be addressing some of those untrue things today. It also helps me to eliminate errors and expand my goodness. So far in our lives, there are things that we may consistently make mistakes on or they may be our weaknesses or addictions or our fears. Those are things we can let go of, and we'll talk about some of those things today. And it is also our ability to release and forgive old ways and old thoughts. So some more of our habits that we need to let go of and old thoughts. That's the biggie. <laughs> okay. So in 1 John 2.15, it is said, 
love not the world or the things or ways of the world. So things of the world are ways of the world. The ways of the world is where we get into trouble. <laughs> There's a lot of ways of the world that are very negative. So whether it's anger, revenge, speeding, reckless driving, all kinds of things. <clears throat> also in Isaiah, it is said, let the wick wicked forsake his ways. So if there's some really bad habits, and bad behaviors, those need to be let go of. So one issue that we'll look at is sickness. Way back in my early 20s, I had a lot of health problems. And so did my mother-in-law. So our conversations were a lot about our aches and pains and, and health problems. But then I got on this path of healing and all my illnesses and symptoms went away. I didn't have much to talk about with my mother-in-law anymore. So what used to be a big uh, piece of our conversation wasn't there anymore. And of course, we didn't get along so well anymore. She didn't want to hear about getting well. So when you listen to people's conversations today, a lot of conversations might be about aches and pains and health problems or the flu or whatever. So what are the favorite conversations that what people like to talk about? Well, maybe today it might be about politics and, and what's going on in Washington and or in the world. And we certainly need more peace in conversations in our government and the governments around the world. Okay, what about poverty and lack? So it is said, and there are statistics about this, that when a family moves from the inner city to the suburbs, the income level of the parents doesn't change a lot. But what happens with the children of the next generation, their income level is going to be greater when they reach adulthood. So we wonder, well, why is that? Well, perhaps because now the children are seeing something different uh, just in the neighborhoods or in the schools that they go to, or maybe the conversations. So it isn't all about what they don't have anymore or the poverty or lack that they're experiencing. And sometimes it might be enough food on the table. And so what we see projects what we believe life is about. So when we are exposed to something different and better, life changes. So it starts with what we think about and what we talk about. Um, page 100 in the Power Within by Eric Butterworth. There is a very interesting statement. And it's about poverty and living in the slums. Well, here we don't call them slums, it's inner city. Okay. Perhaps more important than taking people out of the slums is the task of taking slums out of the people. The thinking. Money may not be able to solve the problems alone. Maybe we need to salute the divinity in these people to help them out by prayer and praise to be transformed by renewing their mind. And so 
just pouring money into something doesn't alone solve the problem. There has to be a change in their minds. And just this week is sort of on a different subject. I saw something about reforming people in prison. And there was this group of men that were meeting and it was about changing their minds about themselves. In other words, if you just put a person in prison, that alone may not bring about a change. For a few, that alone may bring about a change. But when there's a determination to change yourself or change your thinking, then when they get out, they will be different. And so they're talking about maturing or growing up or becoming men. So they're in this group setting to help each other change their minds about themselves and what life can be like after prison. So we need to take criminal mentality out of people. And so I've been teaching at the, the county jail for 27 years, and that's what I've been doing, taking the unity teachings into uh, the county jail, and I'll say biblical teachings, and of course, the miracles teachings as well. So just the other day, when I enter the pod and the, the, um, the guard in the pod, uh, ask who wanted to come to Bible study, will nobody raise their hands right away? And the person said, well, nobody wants to come. I said, well, I'll go up to the library anyway, because somebody always comes. And so within a few minutes to a half hour, um, there was almost a dozen guys that came and they were getting some inspiration by what I presented that day. And incidentally, we're working on the 12 powers also in the 12, 12 weeks, uh, 12 week study. So we need to change the mentality. So what is in our mentality that we need to change? I'll tell you a little story about myself. Um, way back in 1985, when I felt calling to start a healing ministry my husband didn't want me to do it and I felt called that this is what I was to do so we agreed to separate so how I ended up in Houstonford, which is an hour or so northwest of Milwaukee that's a story in itself but I arrived with a U-Haul truck and a few uh, personal possessions. My prayer had been, God lead me to the people I can serve and at the same time earn a living. I left with one or arrived with one month's rent and the U-Haul to get me here. I didn't have to cross a Red Sea to get here, part any waters but I had to come up with the next month's rent. I didn't wander in the wilderness for 40 years. I needed the next month's rent in 30 days. <clears throat> there was no manna on the ground for me to go out and gather either. I had to buy groceries. I'm trying to put a little humor in this. <laughs> okay. So two weeks later, I'm praying, God, what else do I need to do? And I hear this voice that said, have a meeting. Okay. I schedule a meeting at the local library, send out some flyers, um, put an ad in the paper, and I had to sell what I had to offer. I made the next month's rent. And that was in 1985. And I lived out there for 13 years and did a holistic healing ministry and paid my rent, lived comfortably. But the point I want to make is I heard that voice 
that gave me the inspiration for the next step of what to do. And I followed that voice. Okay. And years later, um, I felt the calling to do an inner city ministry and a prison ministry after a relationship ended. And I, in my healing process, got connected with the love of God and felt a calling then to reach out to people the world didn't love. Okay, there was a house that was donated and needed to be rehabbed. Okay, the landlord or the, the previous owner of this house did not know, he had renters on the first floor, did not know that the second floor was full of squatters. So as I go to the second floor and I'm confronted by, I'll say two dozen people, men, women, and children, and I tell them I'm the new owner and um, previous owner didn't know all of you were here, but this house is going to be used for guys coming out of drug and alcohol recovery. And you all have to find a new place to live. And they, their response was, well, we'll sue you. Well, on what grounds do you, do squatters have rights? Okay. But I felt called to just pray with them that God doesn't want any of his children to be homeless. So I prayed that they would all find a new place to live. So a month later, I go upstairs. Nobody's there. But the trash was all left behind. I mean, mattresses on the floor, no food in the refrigerator, but the kitchen was a mess. So call the volunteers together to clean up the mess and rehab the house. Okay, so we get this project going and there are some um, problems or challenges. I had a dream and in the dream, I'm like, first of all, overlooking a river. I'm standing on a cliff. In the next scene of the dream, I'm being carried over the river, like being carried by angel wings. And these angels are a wonderful addition to our uh, chapel here. So I'm being carried over the river in angel wings. End of dream. So the challenges that came up then, I kept praying, God, you showed me in a dream that I would be carried over the river. Don't drop me because I can't swim. So I continued to trust in that dream that I'd be carried through this. So the problems all got solved. Then I'm going to take a vacation, and it happened to be around, I think, Thanksgiving time, and I'm going to go out east to see my sister. And um, so I'm driving my car to the airport, and I got to stop for gas. I don't want to be late, so I get to the airport. I get on the plane, and guess what? The thought comes in my head. Well, this plane could crash and you still won't get there. You know, ego thought, human mind thought. Some religions might say, well, that's the devil tempting you. But whatever you label it, what was my response to it? Shut up. I don't believe you. So that's what we need to do to confront these fear thoughts. Whatever we are confronted by something that is fearful, we need to address our thinking about it. So whether it's a health issue, a financial issue, or a relationship issue, car problem, <laughs> whatever it is, face those thoughts and replace it with your faith or your prayer. And so there's been a number of times in my life where I have simply said, shut up. I don't believe you anymore. So 
the struggle between light and darkness is not between world powers, so to speak. Although, yes, that's part of the lesson. The light, the battle between light and darkness is right in here. And so in our own lives, the struggle for us to rise above um, these things that we are confronted with in our daily lives as human beings here, we address them. And when we hear these thoughts that are so negative, tell them to shut up. And, you know, Jesus had lessons when he's in the desert and this in this one um, lesson he was given. Um, he was shown all the kingdoms of the world. So in other words, whatever makes you happy or whatever makes you feel powerful, this is all yours. And what this, as the story goes in the Bible, Satan says, bow down and worship me and all of that is yours. So in our lives, what that could mean is we're tempted to believe that certain things will make us happy. Um, and so for people with addictions, um, drugs or alcohol or whatever is the source of their addiction is what they think will make them happy. And so, in other words, what did Jesus do? He said, get behind me, Satan. Or we could say, get the hell out of here, you know, be gone. Or to our negative thoughts or fear thoughts, shut up. Don't give power over those thoughts um, that are the temptation um, for the addiction, or if it's food or even junk food or overeating, whatever is the weakness that we have, this is how we rise above it. So Jesus had these temptations as well. And so we are learning to overcome these things. So, okay, that's what I said to the voice in my head when I'm on the plane and I had a wonderful trip. At the end of the relationship, when I was crying out to God for uh, relief of the emotional pain I was in, I remember again hearing a voice that said, let go of the attachment you have to the man. I will show you another way. Well, there was no immediate uh, showing of the other way, but it was a process where I continued in prayer, in study, in A Course in Miracles on the holy relationship where you just love unconditionally. So that was a lesson that I was getting to just love. So let go of the attachment. Well, that's not a simple thing to do. It was it was a process. But eventually is when I got the awareness of my connection to God and God's love. So in a book called Creating Miracles, in the chapter called Creating Miracles Solutions, how to get rid of fear and anger. You know, that fear is a biggie. You know, we can be afraid of all kinds of things. And, you know, as parents, we might have taught children about boogeymen. Or as children, we might have been taught about boogeymen. Does the boogeyman exist? No. So this fear is like a boogeyman. So we adults have boogeymen in our lives too. Okay, this is what it says about getting rid of fear and anger. The spiritual view also implies that an individual who desires a permanent cure, and this is talking about um, overcoming illness would need to uncover and reject all of the conscious and unconscious attitudes, ideas, and motives that express themselves in the form of disability or disease. These ideas would all be different versions of the belief that fear and anger 
and their variants such as guilt, resentment, condemnation, shame, remorse, indignation are all appropriate that you can continue on doing all these things. Doesn't work. Thus, someone might be really having a desire to survive, but continue to harbor a worldview that must inevitably lead to their early demise. It is not that they want to die, it's just that they mistakenly choose to continue investing in destructive beliefs and attitudes. And I had my own lesson with, I had arthritis in my neck many years ago. And I was holding a lot of anger against a business partner who schemed me out of a sizable uh, bonus in income monthly, upwards of $1,000 a month. Was I angry? Yes. So I got my healing. The pain in my neck was gone. I d didn't get rid of the anger. So I had to go back for more healing. And my doctor, who was my teacher in holistic healing at the time, said, you've got to stop being angry against this former business partner. Okay, another healing process. Let go of the anger. I don't have arthritis in my neck. I'm no longer stiff-necked. Might be hard-headed, but not stiff-necked. So I had to, to let go of those things. And I've had other lessons along the way. But um, so we need to really get in, in touch with those negative feelings, negative thoughts, and work at letting them go. And sometimes it's not just our own prayers. Sometimes we need a healing practitioner. Um, sometimes we need group prayer, you know, whatever it takes, but you keep working on it to um, deal with those feelings that we have. And by the way, I might say that I learned anger from my father. My father was exhibited his anger in many ways, many times. So as a child growing up, I learned how to be angry and I learned how to cuss and swear too. But by the time I reached teenage years, I learned that's not very ladylike. So I had to work on that one too. Okay, then there's a story of a minister. I heard him tell a story about that he had this lesson in trusting God about a certain issue he was dealing with. And God's response or his inspiration says to him, or if you want to call it the Holy Spirit, who are you going to believe? Me or that person or whatever he was dealing with? I didn't catch the whole story until he's emphasizing what that Holy Spirit will call it, says to him, who are you going to believe? Me or them? So I'll bring this up. When we study unity teachings or we hear unity teachings or um, Bible studies or Course in Miracles studies, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what you hear on the news? Are you going to believe what other people tell you? Are you going to believe what the world believes? Or are we going to stick to there is only one presence and one power in the world, God and good and peace and love? So pay attention to what goes on up here. And if you have to tell it to shut up, go ahead. <laughs> okay. And um, 
in just this last Wednesday's Daily Word, a quote from it says, I search my mind for thoughts and beliefs that cause me to shrink from life, doubt my abilities, or withhold my gifts and talents. Today, I deny the power I may have given to fearful thinking. I align myself with the presence and power of God, and that drives the fear away. So accept that, and I'll follow what Reverend Patty says. And everybody says, amen. amen. Okay. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you, Thank you. today. So now is the time for our offering blessing. If you take your offering in your hands and pray with me. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. So as the basket is passed, we'll hear from our wonderful musicians and band that is growing. <laughs> Thank you for your music. Thank you very much. Um, our friend Tommy was able to make it today. And so we have this uh, wonderful piece that Doug had found. We had, or I had originally changed the, the lyrics, but then Tommy and I had a conversation. Go ahead, Tommy, take it. Take it from here. <laughs> the metaphors. Oh, yeah. Uh, the song is called uh, There is Power in the Blood. And so Julie was going to rewrite it to uh, Power in the Christ. And we thought, it, you know, there's no holier name around, but it's still hard to sing, you know. And, and <laughs> blood was the natural word of the author of the song. And... So we chose to look back at it as a metaphor. As uh, we listened to the remarks here, I thought, uh, you know, the lamb becomes representative in many good ways. Uh, in the song, another gospel song that I really like, there's a line that said, the bear will be gentle, the wolf will be tame, and the lion shall lay down with the lamb. So the lamb becomes a larger metaphor uh, for, you know, the sacrifice and for... Uh, giving yourself over in gentility to powers that are greater than you. And so now uh, we've decided to restore the lyric for its ease in singing and the more familiarity. And now our only remaining concern is that uh, for the vegans <laughs> in, in the audience.
Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There is wonderful power in the blood. You can sing it with us. There is power, 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 power wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of, the Lamb. of the Lamb. There is power, 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 power wonder-working power, power in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you daily living his teaches to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. Let's go. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, 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 power wonder-working power in the soul-cleansing blood of the land. Woo! There is a gospel band that you <laughs> folks are sounding exactly like the you're doing a very good job of bringing power into the service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we bless the givers. You have given from your hearts to keep this church going. May you be blessed. You are blessed in your giving, and you are blessed in every way. Thank you. So just a few announcements today. What's happening? We continue the book study. Why weren't we taught this in school every uh, Thursday morning at 930? followed by Silent Unity Prayer at 11 o'clock. And A Course in Miracles follows the Sunday service, um, which I am participate in for anybody willing to come. And the Life Journey Group is on the second and fourth Mondays at 6.30. And you can go to the Unity website for past services, guided meditations, Reverend Patty's TikToks and sign up for the newsletter. Check the bulletin board for more information. Thanksgiving Eve. Reverend Patty will join us in a Thanksgiving Eve service, November 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Come and join in the special service. Potluck Sunday follows Thanksgiving on November 26th after service. Come sit, relax, and enjoy the fellowship and bring a dish to share. The artwork on display is for sale. Half of the proceeds, if not all, are gifted to our Unity Center here. What a great way to make a contribution. Celebrations, any birthdays or anniversaries in this month of November? No one here at the service, so for anyone out there uh, watching, if you have a birthday or anniversary, we wish you happy birthday and happy anniversary in this month of November. So now we're ready for our closing hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. So stand and join in the song.
You want to try it in G? Yeah. 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 protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. We did that in a round. That was kind of <laughs> God bless you all and have a blessed week.